Welcome back, all of you wonderful people, to another Slack and Armchair Supporter video. And at this stage, you must know already, it's time for the match preview. It's Aston Villa versus Liverpool. And that's coming to us live on Monday evenings, Monday night football, 8 o'clock kickoff. I'm going to be live. You can see the advert down here. I'm going to be live at half past seven in the evening. So I look forward to seeing you all in the stream. And I'll keep you up to date with everything that gets that happens in the game. So if you're new to the channel, this is a match preview. What I do is I talk about the game, how I think the game's going to go. I'll give you a score prediction and I'll give you a lineup prediction. And um, just before I do get into that, please, if you haven't already, leave a like on the video. And also, most importantly, hit that subscribe button. Every single person who subscribes makes a massive difference to me. It helps my channel grow and also pushes my content out further so that other people who are interested also get to see it. And on that, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who has subscribed. We hit the goal in the last stream over the course of this week. We've gone and we've crept over that 150 subscribers, which is what I wanted to hit before the end of the season. Well, if you're with me from the beginning, you know it was 100. I had to stretch that goal to 150 because we hit 100 a few months ago, maybe three months ago, and we managed to make the stretch goal as well. So I really appreciate you guys so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Let's keep it up. Let's keep doing the work and, yeah, grow this little community. So let's get into my match prediction, <clears throat> my match preview, sorry. Um, of course, I've got my notepad. Villa. It's Aston Villa away, so we're going to Villa Park. Um, obviously, Villa absolutely outstanding this season. Unai Emery in charge. He's been uh, nominated for the manager of the season um, alongside Klopp, Guardiola, Arteta and um, Iriola, um, and Donny Iriola, the, the Bournemouth manager. Them five are up for it. Um, Unai Emery probably deserves it most of what he's done with this Villa side, to be honest with you. I mean, obviously, City, Arsenal, Liverpool can spend the money. I mean, I'm not saying that Villa haven't spent money, but from what he had, what he, you know, gained coming in, what he you know, inherited coming into the club and what he's done and the sort of style of football they've played. They've been a really good team, um, you know, and at the big games, they get results in the big games. I'll, more on that in a little while. Um, but yeah, Unai Emery probably, for me, probably should get the shout for the manager of the season. Um, but yeah, they're fourth in the league. They'll be playing, barring... Well, unless they lose like their games, and I think if Spurs win all their games, the Spurs can possibly catch up with them. But I don't see that happening because Spurs have got to play Manchester City and City are going to win all their games and win the league, unfortunately. But so Villa will be playing Champions League football next season by the looks of it, and they fully deserve it. So they're in fourth place. They've played 36 games, of course, like the rest of us. Um, they've won 20 Drawn seven and lost nine. Um, obviously, <clears throat> they'd be looking to change some of them losses into draws and wins come next season and obviously try and go for the title next season if they want to improve because getting into the top four, getting Champions League football is a massive achievement for them. They've also, just this week, they were in European football this season um, in the UEFA, uh, UEFA Europa Conference League. Um, unfortunately, they did just get knocked out 6-2 on aggregate um, over the two legs against Olympiacos. Um, it was a 4-2. I think it was 4-2 actually at Villa Park for Olympiacos and then a 2-0 at Olympiacos' ground. So 6-2 on aggregate. They've just been knocked out on Thursday. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so no final, no European final for them. Um, then, yeah, so what's surprising... What I said I'd get back to is the head-to-head. -head. Um, we played these earlier on in the season, of course, at Anfield. It was the 3rd of September, and we won 3-0. Now, that is a pretty shocking result, really, because Liverpool, you know, a 3-0 win is quite comprehensive. Um, there was a goal from Soboslai, uh, one from Salah, and then there was also a Matty Cash own goal in that game. Um, yeah, I, I, knew we, I, I knew we'd beaten them 3-0, but... The, as the season's gone on, that's become more and more of a surprising result, especially with the way that we are at the moment, um, the way the things things have turned out. Um, and then their last five, um, their most recent was a 1-0 loss to Brighton away, then a 2-2 draw 
against Chelsea at home, a 3-1 win against Bournemouth at home, um, a 2-0 win against Arsenal away, that was at the Emirates. That's what sort of knocked Arsenal off a top spot and gave City the advantage in the Premier League title race. And then a 3-3 draw against Brentford at home. So the last five hasn't been... Well, obviously, the Arsenal win is a massive result. But other than that, it hasn't been too impressive. It's two wins, two draws and a loss. I suppose that's the story of their season. I mean, there's games there they should be winning, getting more points, and they could possibly be above Liverpool in the table had um, they got a few extra results. So, Villa, good team, is what I'm trying to get at. They've been a very good team, outstanding this year. Um, like I say, Unai Emery has been great at the, the helm. And they're back in European football, um, which is great for them, back in the Champions League. Well, like I said, barring some absolute miracle. Um, <clears throat> so, I'll get on to Liverpool now. We know Liverpool, we know... Um, much, much improved in the last game, which, well, it needed to be. It really, really needed to be 4-2 uh, uh, win against Spurs, of course. It was a great performance for 70 minutes. Great performance, cruising, but that complacency just crept in again. Liverpool just like, yeah, you know, we've got this in the bag. We'll just stop playing football now. See it time and time again. It's really, really frustrating. Allowed Spurs to get two goals. Um, it, it didn't change the result, but it's just frustrating. You know, you think, oh, go on, you could go and get a fifth one and finish 5-0 or even just finish 4-0. But, you know, given the teams that little bit of, you know, encouragement in games, it's it's just dodgy. You can't be doing it, and it's, it's not how you win titles. And that's exactly what has happened today. City have won 4-0. Um, I'm not sure who against Against Fulham, sorry. And it's now mathematically impossible for Liverpool to win the title, but we knew that was going to happen anyway. And City are now in the driving seat. They are top of the league as as, I, as I'm speaking. It is Saturday evening right now. Um, they're two points clear of Arsenal. So it's looking like they'll go on and win that um, for the fourth year in a row, which is a pretty good achievement. So, yeah, what I'm trying to get at is this game is going to be a bit difficult to predict. I don't think Liverpool are going to win it 3-0. Um, as much as I'd like to see them do it, they need to perform like they did against Spurs, but without the complacency, and they need to be at the races straight away. Um, the only thing is, like I said, with City now making it mathematically impossible for us to win the title, we've got nothing to play for. So will we? It's going to be at Villa Park as well, so Villa will have the home advantage. It's going to be a tough one to call. So, with all that in mind, I'm going to do my score prediction, which, <clears throat> again, I haven't put much thought into. I, I like to do it off the cuff when I'm in the video, um, you know, in the spare of the moment. So, I think, well, Villa are going to score. I could see this. Do you know, I was going to go 2-1. But I'll go 3-2 because Villa have got a second goal in them. Um, and I'm not going to go for <clears throat> a draw or a Liverpool loss. So I'll go 3-2 to Liverpool. Again, this game could go anyway. It really could go anyway. Villa have been good. They definitely turn up in the big games this season. And Liverpool have, well, they've sort of shirked away, haven't they, in the big games this season? You know, there was four big games on the trot. And all of a sudden, we're out of three um, trophies. Um, and finishing the season, finishing Klopp's final season with just the Carabao Cup. Um, yeah, so enough said on that. Let's get into my lineup prediction. So I don't think I've changed it from last week, to be honest with you. And here it is. So Allison in goal, of course, Wells number one keeper. He's absolutely outstanding. He really is outstanding. He he's the reason Liverpool are in the position they're in. Um, obviously, you know. Honourable mention to Kelleher. He stepped in while Alisson was injured. But <sighs> Kelleher's still some way from filling in for Alisson full-time. Alisson is just something else. Um, back four, I've gone with Robertson, Van Dijk, Kwanzaa and Trent. That's the same as last week. Um, I was thinking about putting Kanate in there, but for some reason Kanate hasn't been playing. I just don't know what it is. So, And also Kwanzaa's been really good. Um, in there, so why not give him the run in a team, give the youngster a bit of confidence, 
Robbo and Trent either side, of course. It's just, you know, Robertson with the goal last week was great because he's been a bit frustrating to watch. His assists have been, his accuracy on the, the crossing and set pieces, corners and that has been a bit poor. So at least he finally contributed with a goal. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, he got the goal. Um, not the assist which we're used to seeing him get, but a goal is... <laughs> the goal's far better, isn't it? So, of course, they, them two are going to be playing Trent as well with his passing. I don't know if it's like an advert. He's just trying to look for a move away. I doubt it because I think he's going to be loyal to Liverpool. I think he'd be a one-man club or one-club man. But the way he's been passing the ball around, it's like it's like he's putting himself in the shot window, just like, hey, like look at me, I can ping this pass 80 yards and it's on somebody's foot. But... I love to see it. He's an outstanding player. Then in midfield, I've gone with Endo and McAllister. Of course, I was thinking about putting Graven back in, but I couldn't drop Elliot after the performance last week. He was outstanding. And that goal, that goal, well, oh, peach, an absolute peach. So Elliot, of course, gets the nod. Um, Klopp has come out this week and said his only regret is that Elliot hasn't played as many minutes as he'd like. But there's only one person who can actually change that. So... You know, we've been calling out for him to play. A lot of Liverpool fans have been calling out for him to play a lot, um, especially this season. Um, over Saboslai, um, when Saboslai was playing bad. Well, he's had a few spells when he's been playing bad. So, yeah, there's only one person to blame for that. And, well, at least now he's getting a bit of attention and getting the game time. Obviously, there's nothing else to play for, which so it's a bit sad. But he should have been given the chance earlier on in the season. Um, so now into the front three, and I've gone with what I went with last week. This is what I want to see. The, uh, Gakpo from the left, Diaz from the right, Salah down the middle. They both, Gakpo looks incredible coming in from the, the left. Diaz looks better than when he plays on the left, on the right. So I want him to be on the right, and I want Salah to be in the middle. I, don't, I doubt this is what's going to happen. It's what I want to happen, but I doubt it'll happen. I can see Salah being on the right, Diaz on the left. Gakpo through the middle, or maybe maybe he might give another chance to Nunes, but this whole social media social media shenanigans with Nunes just haven't got a clue what's going on, what's going on in his head. Um, is he and his agent talking with Barcelona or whatever? All loader, you know. Again, it's something. Just do it behind closed doors. You don't want to be there. Don't be there. You know I would. Liverpool fans have given him more than enough support and backing. You know, I was even ready for him to be back for another season. New manager might get something out of him that Klopp can't. So, uh, you know, if he's there, happy for it. If he don't want to be there, no one man's bigger than the club. So he can go if that's what he wants. But if not, I'm happy to give him another season. So that is my lineup in full. Um, so... To go through that, it's Allison, Robertson, Van Dyke, Kwanzaa, Trent, then Endo, McAllister, and Elliot, and then Gakpo, Salah, and Diaz. And with that, guys, that's the end of the video. Let me know how I done. If you have any other predictions, get them in the comments. And yeah, if you think I've made a massive cock up, let me know. If you if you change something, honestly, I'm here to chat with you. Let me know, and um, yeah, correct me. And we can discuss it. So thanks everybody who tuned in. I really appreciate you. Thanks for leaving the like on the video and subscribing as well. I really appreciate that. And I look forward to seeing you all in the live stream on Monday evening. And until then, up the fucking Reds.